The Walt Disney Company is making massive changes to the character of Ursula in their upcoming animated series, Ariel. Instead of being this iconic bluish shade, she is now going to be black. Not only are they doing it to Ursula, but they also are getting King Triton as well. Let's look at this here. This change, as ostensibly inspired by the company's similar diversifying of Ariel in their recent live-action remake of The Little Mermaid, was first revealed by Disney during their August 18th Disney Junior and Friends Play Date event, unveiling the first official members of the series cast. President of Disney branded television, Io Davis, announced that Ariel will be voiced by Mixed Dish star Mikael Michelle Harris. King Triton will be voiced by Murder in the First star Tay Diggs and Ursula by Glee star Amber Riley. Alongside these casting details, AO also released new concept art for both Diggs and Riley's respective characters. And while it was previously known that Ariel herself would be race swapped for this new animated series, these pieces of concept art provided information that both her father and her arch enemy would be following suit. So we already saw this. We knew Ariel was going to be black in this uh, Disney Junior TV show. But now we have that uh, tri uh, King Triton is going to be black. There you go. There's concept art of him uh, holding his trident with his, I guess, purple fin there. Uh, just ugly character design, if I'm being honest. And then here's Ursula. Uh, she is now black, and uh, she's wearing blue clothes instead of being uh, having that blue uh, skin color. I guess Nerdigans describes it as a violet dress. Uh, I guess you could call it that. I, it looks more blue to me. Um, gold accessories, etc. And then her... I wouldn't, I don't know, elegantly styled hair. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little, being a little bit too nice there. I don't know. It's kind of like wavy, I guess, like the ocean waves. That's what it kind of reminds me of, or like a cloud. Um, uh, so that is what the Walt Disney Company is doing. Uh, when the series was announced, Disney emphasized that throughout the series, the multicultural diversity of the Caribbean is highlighted through music, food, festivals, fashion, language, and folklore. Dr. Patricia Saunders, professor of English and Hemispheric Caribbean Studies and Director of Graduate Studies at the University of Miami and author of two books, serves as cultural consultant on the series. Sean Skeet, chair of Berkeley College of Music's ensemble department, is the Caribbean music consultant. I mean, at least that guy probably has a valid job. This, this Dr. Patricia Saunders is just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're including stuff that would have been, been happening in the Korea, Caribbean in the past, uh, if it's still being set maybe in the, in the past, I have no idea if, it, if it's being set in the past or being set in the present now. Uh, would make sense if it's if it's if it's set in the in the present. I I don't know why you this. I don't know. I don't this this person. It sounds like a fake job. Someone that could be fired. You don't need them. Uh, the the internet is <laughs> is alive and well. You don't need some expert on the payroll when you can look up uh, any kind of uh, Caribbean culture that you you might need to, or maybe just call someone up and be like, hey, <laughs> instead of like having this person on the payroll. Uh, providing uh, her opinion on what it is. It just seems utterly ridiculous. Uh, I, I doubt that they would do that if they were making some uh, ca cartoon about Ireland or something like that. They wouldn't do that for Ireland. Uh, utterly, utterly ridiculous. Um, but I do want to get into this uh, too, because I, I do think there. this is like obviously a lot deeper. We see this happening all the time. These, these race swaps, these gender swaps, these sexual uh, orientation, identity, whatever you want to call it, swaps, replacements, uh, however you want to define it, however you want to, what terms you want to use. Uh, and I do think that this is part of uh, what Yuri Bezmenov had to say uh, when the Soviet Union was using psychological warfare against the United States in order to demoralize the populace. I do think that what the Walt Disney Company is doing is engaging in this type of psychological warfare, whether they're doing it um, whether they know they're doing it or not, whether it's being done purposely or whether it's being done uh, as as part of uh, they're, they're, they're making they're trying to make it be benevolent or whatever, uh, I, I whatever their reasoning is, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the result is that they are engaging in this. Right. And he explained in this uh, video from like 1984 that the psychological warfare techniques were used to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite an abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their family, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing process, which goes very slow, and it's divided in four basic stages, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to educate one generation of students in the country of your uh, enemy, 
in the country of your enemy uh, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism, Leninism, ideologies pumped into the soft heads of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. So he's saying it's it's Marxism, Leninism. I think you can call it critical race theory. You can call it um, neo-Marxism, whatever you want. They're, they're, they're still, it's the same thing. And, th- and this show is a perfect example of, of that. I, I definitely think by doing these race swaps, they are pushing that ideology onto viewers uh, subcon- subconsciously for sure. But we know that that if you watch their louder, their, their proud family louder and prouder, it's very explicit as well. I would not be surprised if they have things like that in this uh, aerial Disney Plus Little Mermaid show. But not only did Besmanov kind of outline that, but we have this YouTuber here, Academic Agent. I actually think he had a really good breakdown. He talks about how the United States actually engaged in psychological warfare on Germany following World War II. And he talks about how the United States uh, created an original sin in the Holocaust and Nazism, et cetera, in order to, to basically change the way the Germans view themselves. Uh, And he also points out that that this psychological warfare is being done uh, in other countries around the world as well. well. He points to Britain, that the original sin was the empire and colonialism. In America, it was slavery and racism. He then notes that all of these things have coalesced into one unifying concept called whiteness. And for the re-education program finally to be completed, of course, the symbols of these things must be destroyed or else the new mindset cannot take root. So I actually think that his theory here does apply to why we see all these race replacements happening in Hollywood now. They have to remove these symbols of whiteness, such as the 1989 uh, animated Ariel. They did it with a live action. They're now doing it with an actual new animated TV show, and they're trying to indoctrinate new generations into this in order for them to reshape their minds into this like uh, neo-Marxism, anti-racist, uh, uh, critical race theory ideas, uh, and they want to reshape what America is, and they're doing it through the content. Bob Chapik has talked about this in emails to the Walt Disney Company. Uh, you've got executives talking about this as well, that they are trying to reshape children's hearts and minds. Uh, but I just want to point out that this stuff is like way insidious, and this is why you need to impose it, because it is indeed evil, and it is trying to reshape America into this evil version that they want. Uh, and even Besmanov says that, uh, the, that the reason why it's successful is because it wasn't being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. I think we need to counter, I think you can definitely counter it with American patriotism, but you also need to counter it with uh, Christianity. And I think at the end of the day, Christianity is what is going to defeat these absolutely heinous ideologies. Um, and, 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 and we will win. We will be victorious. But I just wanted to point that out uh, because I do, I do think that there is a connection there as to why we're seeing all these race replacements. I think it is connected to kind of this uh, cultural makeover that a lot of the elites in our country are trying to uh, enact upon us.